Now we are going to also look at other types of PDEs. And uh, the first thing we will look at is parabolic PDEs. How to solve the heat equation. Partial u partial t is equal to kappa times partial square u partial x square. In this case, we move the spatial derivatives to the right hand side just uh, for convenience because our kappa is usually a positive number, right? I mean, it's almost always a positive number unless we are solving the PDE backwards in time. Okay, uh, so here we do the same thing. We discretize our solution u on the discrete points and again we imagine we have a delta x 0 equal to 0 being the left hand side of the domain x1 equal to delta x etc and xn is equal to 1 which is uh, n times delta x okay and we are only storing our solution on these grid points well let's make it let's try to make it periodic this time okay uh, we are storing the solution over here. So this time, when we try to discretize it, what we get is this is u0, u1, u2, and the un minus 1 and un. And the dui dt is going to be equal to kappa times some kind of approximation to the second derivative at the grid point i. Now the task is, if I'm at a grid point, how do I use these neighboring values to approximate the second order derivative? Any ideas? Yeah. You just uh, use it to find the du dx, and then you do du dx or discretize that again. Good. So one idea is I can use the fact that the second order derivative is by definition the first order derivative of the first order derivative right and we already know how to discretize the first order derivative so why don't we set say that okay so if my partial u partial x at each grid point i can be approximated as ui plus 1 minus ui minus 1 over 2 delta x for example then my second order derivative can then be approximated by the derivative at i plus 1 minus the derivative at uh, at i minus 1 over 2 dot x which right which in turn can be approximated each can be approximated that way so if we write it down we have okay so we have the first order derivative at i plus 1 and then if we put i plus 1 here with the i plus 2 and i, right? So we have ui plus 2 minus ui divided by delta x minus here would be, if you put ui minus 1 here, here would be ui, here would be ui minus 2. All right, oh, 2 delta x, right? Okay, so that's our scheme. And uh, if you write it down, we have... 4 delta x squared underneath and uh, we have ui plus 2 minus actually 2 times ui plus ui minus 2 right so that's the idea of approximating the second order derivative as the first order derivative of the first order derivative and we know how to approximate first order derivatives all right so now if we put this into a matrix what does it look like Right, so again, we want to uh, we want to say my, I have my du uh, ddt of u zero, u one, etc. to u n minus one. Let's again use periodic boundary conditions times u zero, u n minus one. Right here, uh, the idea is how about we move the kappa and uh, over four delta x outside? What do we get? We have kappa for delta x square, and then uh, what does the interior of the matrix look like? Periodic. The first row should be the same as before. No. 
No. So, so the first one corresponds to uh, the the equation when i is equal to zero. Yeah, zero zero one. That's good, right? Because I I I. Hmm. No. Minus two zero one. Yes, because uh, this the, the coefficient on u zero is minus two. The coefficient on u one is zero because there is no u one, and the coefficient on u two is equal to one, right? And then a bunch of zeros, and then at the very end, I have another one and zero, right? That's because this is the coefficient on u minus 1, which is u n minus 1. This is the coefficient on u minus 2, which is u n minus 2. All right. So then uh, on the second row, everything gets shifted. I have minus 2 here, 0 here, 0, 1, etc. I have 1 here. And the minus 2 goes all the way on the diagonal. 1 goes here, 0 goes here, 0 goes here, and 1 goes here. I have another here, right? Okay. Any any questions on this matrix? This one, right? It comes from this term. Yes, it's the wrapped around term. Yes, and again, this one is also from this term when r is equal to one. Okay. Right, and these two are from the i plus two term when i is very large, close to the end. Okay, so let's see how the solution looks like. <laughs>